Jackie Valerio. So um, welcome to our webinar regarding Dominican Republic and real estate and lifestyle and all that good stuff. So what we would like to do here today is make this a very informal, uh, really educational um, session where you learn a lot about things about the Dominican and then lots and lots of time for your questions and answers. Nazira uh, said to put everything into the, um, the message bot there. And um, if something comes up in the middle and, and it's a good time to interrupt, she will. If not, we'll get to all your questions at the end. And Vicki had received some questions beforehand that she'll answer at the end for you too. So um, a little bit about me, we won't talk too much about us, but I've been selling real estate in the Dominican for 15 years. And I also do marketing for projects. So I've been working with Casa Linda for 10 years. Um, and I've owned three houses there myself. So know an awful lot about the project. I've lived there for 15 years. Um, joining me is Nazira Jamal. She is, I don't know if you see her video, but she's really not on a beach. She's uh, got a green screen behind her. She's actually works with us as an inside sales agent. And also um, out of um, Ontario, she's in, well, kind of Toronto area. So she'll work with buyers in the Toronto region and also uh, Ontario, and then also the Northeastern part of the US. So you'll see her a lot at trade shows and things like that when it's non COVID time. Also joining us from her backyard and her swimming pool in the Dominican is Vicki Tetley. Vicki, another transplanted, we're all a bunch of transplanted Canadians. We do have Americans uh, working with us as well, but today you got the Canadian team here. So uh, Vicki is a transplant from Ontario and lives full time and works for us in the Dominican. She's an inside sales uh, person with us and she also works with outside, a outside real estate company too. So she, she's uh, kind of all encompassing. And I'm just going to interrupt because of the sun in my background. I don't see the screen very well. So if I'm not waving at someone, please forgive me. I, I can hear you, but I can't really see you. So it's nice, nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really yucky problem, Vicky. Sorry about it that. It is, isn't it? The sun in your eyes is too hard. I'm actually in Edmonton right now. I go back to the Dominican on Friday. So, anyway, so the topics we're going to go over today are just why you would choose the Dominican Republic for your vacation home or second home or retirement home, why there, and then why the North Coast, why we think it's better up our way. Um, things to really watch for when you're buying foreign property, whether it's with us or in our country or anywhere else. Um, a lot about, Cal or uh, some about Castle Linda Villas, what we like about this project. Um, if you wanted to rent your property, what that looks like, what the buying process is like if you wanna buy in the Dominican, uh, financing, and then questions and answers, so. Without further ado, we're just going to watch a quick video, which will get you thinking and show you the area and a little bit about Casa Linda. It's quite short, but we'll have a quick look just to get you thinking about the area. That's the north coast of the Dominican Republic right there and some actual Casa Linda houses and Casa Linda kids that we filmed one day. So let's talk a little bit now about where the Dominican Republic is. I can't see everybody. So I'm assuming some people have been there, some people haven't. So for the people that haven't, this is the, the southern tip of Florida. So there's Miami and down here's the Dominican Republic. So it's 936 miles for our American friends and 1,508 kilometers for us Canadians. 
Um, so a hop, skip and a jump from Toronto, four and a half hours, New York, three and a half hours. And we get a lot of people from North Carolina, so three hours. For, we have a number of people here from uh, Florida on the webinar, so it's one hour and 50 minutes for you guys. I'm going to turn it over to Nazir now, who's going to tell you why all of us originally did our due diligence and chose the Dominican and what we like about it and why we think it's a great investment and a great place to be. Thanks, Colleen. So really, um, you know, DR is well known as a tourist destination. Many people have been to either Puerto Plata, Punta Cana, or even Samana, and we're known for our inclusive resorts. But we're actually also an expat area as well. And we'll go over all the details why people come to the DR to buy and, and live here. Uh, first of all, we have the weather and the beaches. So we have over a thousand miles of coastline. If you're a beach lover, then really this is gonna be your favorite. Our beaches are all public and some very developed like Cabarete Beach. Um, and then you get some rustic beaches such as uh, Playa Regilio, which is um, you know more rustic where you can just pull up your um, cooler and just have a great day at the beach. The average uh, year round temperature, you will find about 28 degrees for Canadian, uh, our Canadian friends at 28 degrees Celsius or about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a real easy way to say no to snow because you enjoy these temperatures all year round. It's the number one tourist destination in the Caribbean. We are now open to tourists as we've managed our COVID numbers really well. And so I just wanna to touch that on a little bit about that. Back in March, we did have a full shutdown and it really helped us really come back into opening our borders, having our protocols in place, uh, the curfews are in place, guidelines are there to really keep everyone safe. And we are seeing a lot more tourists and a lot of people coming back into the Caribbean visiting uh, us in Casa Linda. So we're close, we have close ties to the United States and Canada with tourism and free trade agreements. This is really important to note. Uh, we're a very stable country. It's been a democracy for a long, long time and it's very closely tied. And that's really important because a lot of our owners do come from either the United States or Canada. So again, this is really an important point to note. We're a stable foreign investor friendly government. It's, it's um, basically this means that it is uh, low on taxes. You know that your money is safe. You can buy a property here. You can get your money out of the country, which is another thing to note because um, you know, we are really running the economy with uh, the tourism dollars and the people that live here. It's really important uh, to note that we are a stable government. We have a healthier and more natural lifestyle. This was really important to me and my husband when we were really choosing the DR. And we found that when we came down there, we were able to get more fruits and vegetables more easily. And, um, you know, things are really like daily, you're getting fruits and vegetables where farmers are just bringing it down and they have carts on the road and you can buy these daily as opposed to Canada, really. Things are being shipped here weeks on trucks and things like that. So it's very natural in that way. The other thing is, the vitamin D that you get, it is an outdoor lifestyle that in the DR. So it's really great that you get to enjoy the outdoors. You really feel more uplifted. Your, your mood tends to stay better and you do get a lot more exercise just because you are able to get outside like 365 days a year. So it's really a great lifestyle to be a part of. Zira, can I just interrupt just briefly? I just wanted to further say with the natural lifestyle and the fresh fruits and vegetables that when I first arrived here, I actually lost 25 pounds. Um, and a lot of it was because I was I was active more um, in the winter. I was getting more exercise. But a lot of it, too, was the, the fact that it's not GMO fresh fruits and vegetables. They're natural fruits and vegetables, which are so, so, so much more beneficial for you. I think that's a great point, right? Like a lot of people that are looking at making a lifestyle change, this is really one of those things that we don't really get to experience in, in North America, right? So I think that's a really good point. Thanks, thanks for that. So, so it's affordable real estate. I mean, this is something where I'm an agent here in Ontario and the pricing for housing is astronomical. A lot of people really can't even get into the real estate market. And so what you find is we have affordable luxury starting at only $199,000 US, which is allowing people to make that transition, whether it's your second home, whether it's a retirement home, it allows people to really get their dollar to stretch fast uh, farther uh, based on the luxury and the, the type of real estate you can purchase. 
we have very low property taxes. So this is something that me and my husband were uh, astounded at just because we pay over almost $10,000 here in Ontario for our property. And in, in Casa Linda, what you'll find is between zero to $1,500 per year. So again, it's easy on the pocketbook. Transition is very easy because you can understand, you know, our, our dollar is going that much further and we're able to do more things uh, to really uh, feed our lifestyle rather than just paying all these taxes. Safety. Now we want to talk about this because it comes up a lot uh, where people ask, is it safe? The uh, country as a whole caters to tourists and expats. It's in their best interest, obviously, to have the safety in place as we are, um, you know, feeding into their economy. So that is something to, to really note. And um, in terms of, you know, going out at night and um, being safe, it's very safe to be walking, going out to restaurants and going on the beach in the evenings. Like you don't have to really fear. I mean, you do get petty crime, but you know, you're not really um, afraid of your life or anything like that. So you do, you do want to sort of note that in terms of the safety that the Dominican provides. We have a low cost of living. Again, this is the transition I'm talking about with people that are looking at either making it a vacation home or, um, sorry, I'm just going to mute over here just so we don't get the background noise. Um, yeah, so again, the cost of living is one of those reasons why a lot of people will make this transition because they are looking at maybe downsizing their life in North America where they're looking at pre-retirement. Maybe they're thinking about leaving a legacy home for their, their children and their grandchildren. So this is a, a way to do that in terms of that cost of living piece. And then we'll talk about the simple residency process. This comes up a lot for people asking us questions of what, is, what does it entail? It's a very simple process. And just so you know, they're looking for three, the, the criteria they're looking for are threefold. One is no criminal record. Two, you uh, want a clean bill of health. So no HIV, no AIDS. And um, number three is your solvent, which just means that you're able to support yourself. They want to see that. Again, the process is very simple. And I know that we'll be sharing a lot more information on this uh, for those that really have deeper questions. But the process is simple because it's, again, part of allowing us to come into the country easily. Now we are a Spanish speaking country. And um, you know sometimes people will say, well, I don't speak a word of Spanish. Neither do I. And I know Colleen doesn't. I know Vicky. I, I, hey, I have a few words. A few words. No. And I know Vicky's been taking some Sorry, lessons. Vicky. In Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky has been taking Robert some lessons. <laughs> exactly. So it's not that you have to know Spanish. You can obviously learn. And it's great to know a few words that'll get you around. But overall, in the tourist areas, Pretty much everyone speaks English. If they don't, they'll go find somebody that does. So it's really a, a place where you can feel like you can get around. I know Vicky had mentioned we can use Google Translate uh, sure. technology, right? Like you can really yeah. get around with that piece and then just the fact that most people do speak English. So it's really easy to navigate. So welcome to the North Coast, also known as Amber Coast. And the reason it's known as the Amber Coast is because we mine amber on the island. <laughs> You can see the landscape just from the pictures. It's very mountainous. Um, the, the, the actual landscape here is different than that of Punta Cana. If you've been to Punta Cana, you'll notice that it was very flat. Whereas here we have mountainous regions. It's very picturesque here. So we really think that the North Coast provides that. Uh, it's really eye candy. So it's beautiful. <laughs> So this is a map right here of the Dominican Republic and it takes uh, two thirds of the island of Hispaniola. Um, a lot of people who have traveled uh, have gone to an all inclusive resort and the majority of the resorts are down here in the Punta Cana area. Down here is Santo Domingo, which is the capital city. So it's a really large urban center of over 4 million people. They have a big uh, underground subway system. It's very, very urban. It's also um, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was the first uh, location of the first city in the Americas, the first street, the first cathedral. It's, it's quite a nice place to go and visit. You may have heard of Samana. This is being developed, this in Las Terrenas in terms of resorts and a bit of expat land as well. And then up here, this is us. So you fly into the Porta Plata Airport, which is right here, and Casa Linda is located just between Sasua and Cabarete, and these are about 10 minutes apart. So what's interesting to know about the North Coast is that this is where tourism started in the DR. All those first resorts that are 30 years old now started here in Porta Plata, and they're, of course, getting a big facelift now because we're seeing the money all come back to the North Coast after they've developed down here. Um, 
the, the other thing that this has happened is because Susua was started by Jewish refugees um, after World War II, the Dominican government let um, them in and they basically carved out the jungle and created a town. So it's been an international area since the end of the world of World War II. And since then, all nationalities have come there and lived. So it's an expat um, haven. And also, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have allergies today, sorry. Um, it's also um, a place where people come and rent condos and villas as opposed to just all inclusive. So we've got a large tourist market. It's just a bit different than the Punta Cana area. It's important to note, for, so people know as well, Colleen, that the Castle End is about a six hour drive from Punta Cana. Most people don't realize the island is that big. And I've talked to many people before who say, hey, I'm in Punta Cana. I'd love to come, I'd love to come see the villas. And I'd say, uh, no, maybe your next trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we always say it's better up our way on the North Coast. And this is, this is why we think the North Coast is, is the better place to call home. Um, well, from Porta Plata to Sabaneta, so that would be about a 45 minute drive. There's over 25 uncrowded public perfect beaches. So if beaches are your thing, uh, like Nazira said before, we have all kinds of great selections. And, you know, people think the beaches are better down in Punta Cana. They're not, not at all. We have beautiful beaches. Um, like I said, the North, North Coast has been home to expats for a really long time. So it started off mostly as Europeans, particularly Germans. And you get Italians and French, but now in the last, I'd say 15 to 20 years, it's been definitely North Americans. We make up the greatest group of people there now. And even the businesses are owned by, by North Americans, a lot of them. We're a prettier and more diverse location. We've got, we're mountainous, we're full of valleys and lots of ocean views. So it's not flat, it's really quite pretty. So if you wanna be up high, you can, you can be on the water, you can do whatever you like. Um, this is important. Our area of the North Coast around Porta Plata has never had a recordable hurricane. So what happens is when it crosses, the hurricanes cross over the island, it crosses these large mountain ranges and they kind of peter out to a tropical storm or they're heading around the east side and they take off and head up to Florida. So that's nice. We actually are insured even against hurricanes. So if you can get insurance, it's a pretty low risk. So we say, you know, beaches and palm trees are great, but what is real Caribbean life like, you know, and I filmed a couple of episodes of that and I know how they do it. They try to make it look like an endless holiday and it kind of is in some respects. You're always, look at Vicky. I mean, look where she is. <laughs> so it is kind of like that, but you know what? You, nobody wants to be on holidays forever. You need services for real life. And that's what the North Coast offers in, in droves is services for real life. And we'll start that with, that we have the same standards as North America in things like technology. So, you know, Vicky's talking to you on her internet from her house. You know, we all watch Netflix. We all have a voice over IP phone system. You don't miss out on anything in terms of technology. And that's really important. Um, medical care, as we're getting older, you know, most of us that are going down there are not 20 or maybe even 30 or 40, I don't know, I won't. So as we get older, medical care really becomes a, a important factor. So you need English speaking doctors that are well-trained, you know, the nurses, can you, can, is there a good lab? Can you get an MRI? We can get all those things right around where we live. <coughs> Excuse me, it's not COVID, it's an allergy. Um, this hospital down here is Holmes from Santiago. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, they're doing robotic surgery. So really first world services and, and the ability to get your prescriptions, things like that. That's really, we have a lot of buyers and that's a really important thing for them. Also natural services like massage, acupuncture, Reiki, physio, all of that is available right around where we live in Cabaret and Sisua. <coughs> Goodness. This by the way, is a picture of Cabaret beach. This is over a mile of restaurants and shops. It's a really great place to go for an afternoon or, you know, dine under the moonlight under all the stars. So. Um, we offer uh, great restaurants, great shopping, all your favorite brands, clean, modern stores. In just around Sisua and Cabarete, there's three very modern, beautiful grocery stores with everything you're used to. Um, if you go a half an hour down the road into Porta Plata, you've got big box shopping in La Serena and Jumbo, which is like a Walmart and other shopping. Um, an hour away in Santiago is, is Costco. It's called Price Mart where we are. But you can even go to Ikea on the island. So you're not missing out on any shopping. Uh, we find restaurants, um, we tend to eat out an awful lot in the Dominican because it's very fresh and it's very affordable. Between 40 and 50% off what I'm used to in Canada. And we have, I find restaurants very expensive here, especially drinks, you know, things like that. So it's, it's easy to get out and about and, and it's very affordable. 
unlimited events and community. So we'll talk about community in a minute, but um, what's important is what are you going to do all winter or whenever you're there? So, you know, like I always say, I love my husband, but I don't want to stare at him for six months. I need some friends and I need to have things to do. So whatever you're doing in your home country, what your hobbies are, it's a big enough community that you're going to find it there too. So things like anything with water sports, obviously, or fishing, uh, golf, quadding, tennis, um, you know, there's ladies groups, there's English speaking churches, um, Alcoholics Anonymous even needs it. I'm not suggesting you need that, but that's an option should you go to too many of these restaurants. Um, anyway, so there's all, an awful lot going on all the time. Colleen, um, I have a question if I can just jump in. Does sure. Amazon ship to uh, yeah. the Dominican? Yes, Florida? absolutely. Yes, Amazon, Wayfair, all of it. Yeah, we all, again, life is really very much the same. We always say it's like home only warmer and it really is. Um, we have three international schools in our immediate area, and we have always had families that move there um, and have children in school. But with the COVID um, pandemic and people finding out that they don't have to work from an office, they can really work anywhere. We're really seeing a boom in international students coming in. Plus, many kids, like I, right now in Canada, they in Alberta, they've closed the schools again. They're back to doing their online stuff. So, you know, a lot of kids are just going to continue with that. So having that proper internet, really good internet in your home is important too, because you might be educating your kids from the Dominican as opposed to wherever you're living now. So we talked just a, a bit about community and it really is once you do your due diligence on a country and where it's the second most important thing in my opinion, because we are very social creatures. And I think we all found out that out during COVID when we were all stuck at home for so long that you miss you know, seeing your family, you miss seeing your friends and just getting out and about with other people. So having an English speaking community is really, really important. And that's something that we have in droves on the North Coast with such a large community, but particularly Casa Linda, which Vicki will talk about what that's all about in a little bit. So if you're thinking about doing this and all of you must be to an extent because you joined us today, what are the things that you should consider and look out for when you're considering buying a foreign property? So besides real estate and, and marketing, my background, we owned a mortgage brokerage in Canada for many years. My husband's an ex-banker and broker. So we saw a lot of stuff happen just on the Canadian side with finance and, and titles and things like that. Imagine when you're going to another country, it's, you really have to be very careful. So see, these are some of the things to consider um, no matter where you're looking. So the first is security and management. And what we mean, we mean by that is Having you know, expats need specialized services. So many of you, if you buy, you won't probably pick up and move there permanently right away or maybe never. So you're going to go back and forth. Even me, I'll go home for the summers. This year is a little strange, but you know, when I'm not there, somebody's watching my house. So we have, you know, gated security, a management system where someone's watching and making sure the roof isn't leaking and the pool's not leaking and the toilet's not leaking, all those different things that you need specialized services. No property should sit empty and unattended in any country for any length of time. First, and it avoids your insurance if you do that. The government, how safe is the government where you're considering going? How long have they been a represented, you know, a democracy? Are they a democracy? Are they investing in their own people in terms of education and, you know, technology? Um, is it, you know, what are they like in terms of, uh, do they want you to come? Are they interested in having uh, expat money in the country? And what are the ties to the United States and Canada? That's very important. When you have, when you're very closely tied with things like free trade agreements and tourism, there's a vested interest in keeping expats happy. And that's definitely the Dominican. Titles, do you actually own your property? And many countries you don't. You buy in a life lease, you buy in a bank trust, or you're in a position where you're, the country does not allow you to buy within a certain number of meters from the ocean. Um, in the Dominican, you own your title outright, so you get a copy of it with your name, either in a, your personal names or in a corporation, if that's how you choose to buy it. So you actually own your property. I think that's very key. Taxes. You know, there's a number of Canadians and Americans on this call, and I think we can all agree that we are sick and tired of high taxes. But you want to make sure that the, the second country you buy in doesn't also have their hand in your pocket. So check on things like what is the capital gains um, taxation, inheritance tax, you know, even just um, sales tax. What's your cost of living going to be like? And are they going to be, you know, is it a high property tax, that kind of thing. And are taxes different if you're a foreigner? Because that's the, the way it is in some places as well. Quality of construction. Many countries have different rules and different laws in terms of, you know, what their standards are when they construct. 
The other issue that we see a lot is with pre-sales with condos. So if the developer or builder really doesn't have any money and what they're looking for is pre-sales and they need to sell 80% before they'll even start and they sell 60, now your money's tied up for who knows how long. So be very, look at the solvency and look at the quality of the construction of the builder that you're coming from. You can always check, you, certainly if you have a builder, go and see other houses that they built, talk to other owners. Um, also, you know, are they pulling proper permits? Um, are they following environmental impact studies, things like that? that are they proper and uh, legal in the country and are they building properly in terms of the infrastructure of that country? We touched a bit on safety. Um, many countries are extremely unsafe. And if you can't feel comfortable walking down the street at night, then that's a real problem. And you can check crime stats um, online. It's not that difficult at all. Every country has its issues, of course. Dominican, it's pickpockety type crime. Uh, it's, it's generally, you know, anything can happen, but we're not looking at violent crime. Colleen, I, uh, I've lived here now for a little over three years, and I just wanted people to know that I'm actually here by myself because my husband is still in Canada. He's about two years away from full pension if he doesn't go a little earlier. We're, we are thinking, but we do have to be uh, realistic too. But it was important to both of us to know safety was really good here because he really couldn't be losing his mind back there worrying about me. So I, I just want people to know that it's that kind of environment here that you are safe and, and your family members can be rest assured that you're safe here as well. Yeah, and we, you know, we talk about gated communities later and a lot of that is for various reasons, but it's not because you should feel unsafe in the country at all. And there's a lot of women um, that retire there alone, single, mm -hmm. lots of single women down there. Yeah. So this is one that people probably don't think about and I always tell the same story because I was standing at a trade show one time and there was another country rep was a like a second home vacation home show anyway the, the booth beside me was another country which i won't slam but um <laughs> they, they were telling the people standing there and when you land it's just a short three hour drive to your house and i thought oh, what are you kidding me <laughs> i want to land when i land in Puerto Plata airport i'm like 15 minutes away to my shorts and my backyard, like you don't need a quick three hour drive. You don't have to do that. So be, be cognizant of the drive from the airport. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Miss Vicky, who doesn't own the chip company, but you know, we call her that. Shares in Tetley Tea either, that's important. Right, so she's gonna tell you a little bit about what Casa Linda Life is all about and why we like this project so much. So as Cal Colleen already mentioned, I work here at Castle Linda too, and I, and I live here too. And I just absolutely love this community. I've been in a number of the other gated communities in this area. And, and I can tell you that Castle Linda is the one that feels the homiest and, and the most like a community. There are others that are more, uh, much more resort-like, um, but if you're looking for a community, um, this is really where it's at its best. Uh, Cass Linda actually, um, as the picture shows you, it, it's affordable luxury in paradise. Um, it's about living your life outdoors and your, your outdoor spaces, living life to your fullest, uh, surrounded by friends, neighbors, and lushness. At Casa Linda, um, our motto is your villa, your way. So Castle Linda is actually the best-selling development on the north coast of the Dominican Republic right now. And with future land, uh, we are actually positioning ourselves into being the largest gated community uh, on the whole island complete. Um, it is a gated community. It is very secure um, and it caters to foreign investors. There are some Dominicans that live in here too, but the, the, primarily it's foreign buyers here. Uh, Castle Linda offers specialized services for people who, who don't live here full time. And at the same time, they offer those for services for those who, who are here full time. It is a, a large project and it's able to offer fully titled tropical villas, premier services, uh, rental program options, which is nice uh, for those who wish to rent their villas and full uh, full administration services as well. So it's a headache free investment and something that where you can like lock up and leave as Colleen has already said a little bit. It, it's safe to know your investment is secure. 
The next slide kind of shows you just the convenience of our location. At Casa Linda, we're 10 to 15 minutes away from the airport. K Colleen isn't kidding. It's a very short, short drive, although I like to pull people's legs and tell them to buckle up and we're, we're in for a long drive just to, to kid around a little bit. But literally, it's not too far at all. We're also very, very close, three minutes to the nearest hospital, uh, about three and a half minutes to the closest grocery stores. But there are a number of grocery stores and shops and everything you need within just a short short minute drive. The nearest beach is about two and a half kilometer walk from Casa Linda, but there are other beaches just a short, short drive away too. Lots of restaurant, lots of restaurants, lots of shopping nearby too. And what's really important is that uh, that Port of Plata Airport is actually very easy to get to. There's currently about 20 different airlines that fly into the Port of Plata Airport. So it makes getting here easy. So what makes Casa Lindy community the best? Um, obviously, uh, the sense of community is prime, um, but also what makes it part of that is the 27 year history here. Uh, 27 years of development, construction, management, and rental services. Um, it's a 24 hour gated community. So it's lock up and leave, it's secure. Uh, you feel very safe here and outside the project as well. There are 24 hour English speaking offices. So there is a reception desk uh, that caters to renters in English and there's an owner liaison and uh, administration offices that, that cater to the owners and they're all speaking English as well. Castle Linda is actually an ever growing project. We're currently 350 villas um, and we're looking at future growth. The project is owned by a Norwegian and a Canadian both of them are businessmen with years of experience and I think it's important to note that both of them actually live here on the project themselves. Uh, Casa Linda also offers you great amenities so there's a free shuttle bus. This one's really big for a number of people who don't want to drive here and if you've been to the island before you know that the motos um, can, can sometimes make driving uh, a little bit more difficult or at least nerve-wracking. So the shuttle bus, it operates on a schedule, um, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, it isn't on demand, but it takes people into Sisu and to Cabaretti and your easy access to the beaches and your grocery stores and things that you need to do. Uh, Castle Linda also has an on-site restaurant, Castaways. Castaways is fantastic. The staff are great. They'll deliver to your villa if you don't want to go down to the restaurant. They're a site of a number of our activities at times, ladies lunch, um, owners Christmas parties, things like that. That probably won't happen this year due to COVID, but we get together when we can. Uh, they usually actually do uh, Thanksgiving dinners and they'll observe a Canadian Thanksgiving dinner and the American Thanksgiving dinner and, and, and things like that. It's also a mini market down in our welcome center. So the mini market is not a grocery store. It's not as large. It doesn't offer everything you need, but it does give you the, the, the amenities, the things that you may run out of or the things that you may want quickly um, so that you can access it uh, without actually going all the way back into town. Uh, mini putt is here as well, mini golf. And I've seen a number of people, um, uh, families and uh, 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 big children as well. Um, we once went over there and started playing a little tournament and it can get pretty cutthroat, but it's a lot of fun. You should really enjoy it. Um, the amenity we're most, most excited about is actually our new water park. It is due to be opening any day now. So I'm hoping within the next week or so, uh, they've had a few small delays, mainly because of some rain that we've had here lately, but uh, it has a, a children's area, uh, a lazy river around it. There's an adult pool. There's a whirlpool that overflows into the adult pool. There's a swim up bar, which is kind of nice. Uh, there'll be a barbecue restaurant there. So, so we're pretty excited to get that open as well. Phase two of that project will actually be uh, in the works still, and that's going to have uh, uh, an expanded uh, sports area. So the, the tennis court will be resurfaced. They'll be relocating bocce ball and shuffleboard there. There'll be a half basketball court um, and uh, a small gym. So we're excited to get phase two done as well, but we really wanted to get that water amenities park rolling uh, before the rest. There are also walking trails here at Casa Linda that you can make use of. And what's important about those is that they are shaded. So you can walk during the day and not have to actually direct, walk in the direct sun, which is really, really nice. So there's lots to do here for sure. My husband never gets bored when he comes. Casa Linda are very private villas. Um, they're all very distinctive. They're stylish. They're unique. 
all our new uh, floor plans that you see in our buyer's guide right now are all very modern looking. But that doesn't mean we can't do something more Hispanic. We can certainly put a tile roof on a number of our villa, not all of them, but a number of them. Um, if, if you want something that looks more Hispanic, every villa is in a secluded uh, lot or a retreat. So you have your own private yard, you have your own pool, and you have your own covered outdoor terrace. All the lots are fully titled, so they're fully titled homes. There are several floor plans to choose from. Um, and we can customize any of those floor plans. So when you come here to take a look at villas, it's actually very difficult for me to actually take you into a villa and say, this is a standard sun seeker as an example, because many owners have taken those plans and tweaked them a little bit to make them theirs or what they want for when they're here more often. Um, so in addition to tweaking the floor plans we have, you can certainly just completely build a custom design if you have something in mind. Uh, Castland also offers consistent quality and exec executive uh, construction specs. So our, our builds are, you know, you have your choice whether you want a concrete block or you want a build of a foam product. There are pros and cons to both and we'll, we'll discuss that more with you when you get here and we'll show you some examples of both of them. But all our new uh, villa prices actually include a number of upgrades in them. So we're now using quartz countertops in all our, our models. We're using a new stretch fabric um, ceiling, C gives it a much more polished matte look. And ooh, Italian kitchens. We have Italian designed kitchens that go into all our kitchens now and Italian cabinetry that goes into the bedroom. So they're just a few of the upgrades that are included in our prices now. You can also get many optional upgrades. So by upgrades, I mean things you're gonna pay extra for. So things like an infinity edge pool if you want it or a hot tub on your pool deck and the hot tub can sit above the pool deck or it can be submerged into the pool deck. I had someone recently, even last week asked me, you know, if I wanted to, to run propane lines underneath my pool deck so I could have a fireplace out there, is that possible? And I said, absolutely it is. That's just a matter of, of um, working with our design team and our architects and, and the staff that will make that all happen when we actually start into the interior plans of your actual villa. So the exciting news is that we have approximately 100 new lots that will be coming shortly and they'll be released for development. So we're excited to see uh, how we can make this community grow. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. She, I know Vicki can't see your screen. It's just she's I can't. Time, so I'm trying to give her some cues. What's up? <laughs> So instead of saying, where do you want to go? The beach, the beach, the beach. Um, I, I want people to know, and, and this used to be actually an owner's incentive. This has actually been broadened now. So it not only applies to owners, but it applies to renters who are renting from uh, Castlinda approved rental posts too. So all those people are going to be, be allowed to have access to our VIP beach clubs. One is on Cabaretti Beach. The other is on Sasua Beach. And both of them offer discounts on food and beverages, and they offer things like free lounge chairs to, to use while you're at the beach. So that's a nice little perk. Free kayaks in Sasua too, I found out yesterday. Yeah, and a paddle board, I believe, yeah. So this brings us to the question of, let's say we like all this, how do you buy in the Dominican? Like, what's the process? So I'm just going to go through it really quickly. And one of the things that I think is surprising to everybody is how similar it is to the systems that we're already used to. I know Nazira, having been a real estate agent in Ontario for 15 years, was quite surprised when she originally came how, how much it was like what we're used to doing. So I'm just going to go through it in a really simple process. We're happy to send it to you in, in much more detail later, but this will give you sort of an idea of the process. So like anywhere, let's say now there's two different ways to buy. Of course, there's a resale property or there's construction like what we're offering at Casa Linda. So originally you would, if you're doing a resale, you would make an offer of purchase. So if I'm gonna buy my house from Vicki, uh, Nazira, my realtor is gonna work with me. We're gonna present an offer, we're gonna counter, we're gonna go back and forth. We end up on a price, we write a final offer of purchase and that's it. And in North America, that's generally the piece of paper that's gone goes to the lawyer and that's the end of the story. That's the only thing you need. Um, in our case, we do something different. We do a lot reservation. So you'd come and you know, spend some time here, go through some houses, decide on a floor plan, do some tweaking, get a price, choose a lot. And then once that's all been determined, you might be going back and forth for a while, you know, finishing and, and tweaks, but then you're going to send the money for your lot reservation. Do you come down with $25,000? No. 
what happens is when you return back to your home country, you're going to send the deposit or the lot reservation to your lawyers. Uh, we call it in Canada a trust account. The Americans call it an escrow account. You will have met uh, the Dominican property lawyer before you leave. And you know they'll do everything for you in English. They hold your hand through the whole process. They're excellent. So the next step now is there's an additional contract in the Dominican called a promise of sale. So this is the document in Spanish. You'll receive one in English for your approval that is used eventually to convey the property to you from the uh, vendor to the, to the purchaser. So that's one difference. Now, if you are buying an outright house, you've maybe sent your deposit, maybe you've just sent all the funds and you just go straight to closing, but that's the general way is that you, you put a deposit down and then you transfer the balance of the funds in the terms of a resale property, you've just bought it, it's yours. In our case, it's a bit different because you're building a property. So it takes between four and seven months, depending on the, the size of the house to build with us. So originally you send a lot deposit and then we're gonna ask you for money in stage payments due to where we are in construction. So let's say phase one of construction, all of this number of things have to be done. We say, send your first payment, we complete those, we send it to the lawyer, proof that we've made those uh, construction stage uh, stages or have been complete. And we say, can you release the second uh, you know, set of funds to go to phase two? And then you say yes, and then we go. So that's how it works when you do uh, draw construction payments. At the end of it, your lawyers is creating something called a deed of sale, which will eventually get you your title. And that's it. The title is yours and the property is yours. Now, there's a lot of steps in there as well, where you're going to come down and take possession and you're going to need furnishing and all of that. But this is the basic buying process. So it's very simple, very easy, uh, easy to understand. You receive a copy of everything you need to know in English as well, and you must sign off on everything. So you, there's no question marks. There's no um, concern and worry. And I've you know, bought three or four properties down there and it's always gone very, very well. And I've sold too, and that's been easy as well. So that's another good one to know. So mortgage financing. Vicki, would you like to speak to that a little bit? Because financing is available. I can, yeah. Actually, to be honest, cash is always the best and it's the easiest. And the reason I say that is because mortgage financing here in the DR, it's not the same as in North America. It's a much, much longer process. It's more difficult. It is possible, but it's much more difficult and longer. Um, they're going to look for can things. Can I just speak to why that is for a second? Because I think people always say, well, why is it so much harder? And the reason is that if you are a Dominican citizen buying your primary residence with your local bank, it's very similar to what we're used to. It's sure. different. We are foreign nationals and it's a foreign buyer program. So we're not, you know, the instrument to take the property back is harder, should be default, all sorts of things like that. So it's having getting these foreign buyer programs together has taken the Dominican banks a little while for them to get their head around the fact that these are are no brainer mortgages in a way. And here's why. Vicky will go into some of the qualifying and, and what the terms are like. So, so yeah, it, it's very similar um, to what back home, similar standards, qualifying standards. So they're going to want to look at your income, of course, and they're going to want to make sure you have enough income to be able to borrow what you're looking to borrow. They're also looking to see what your debt service ratio is, and they, they want to see what your credit rating is. And by credit rating, I mean a transunion credit rating. So Scotia Bank, uh, we, we've consulted with both uh, Banco Popular in the past and Scotia Bank. I know Scotia Bank in particular look for credit ratings of 660 from our friends from the United States and from the UK. And they're looking more at, at credit ratings of a, uh, 680 or more from those from Canada. So I'm going to talk a little bit about interest rates. Interest rates here have always been, since I've been here, they, they've ranged kind of between 5.5% and 5.9%. In the last couple of weeks alone, we've actually negotiated, um, and when I say we, Casa Linda and the, their administration team, uh, because all the banks here, you're not just mortgaging, you're not just negotiating with the bank to, to be mortgaged, but all the, the gated communities in this area are actually working with those same banks to, to qualify as well. Um, so the interest rates I'm about to share with you are with Scotiabank, and they are ones that they have negotiated with Casa Linda more, very, very, very recently. So 3.75% fixed rate for a period of three years. After that three years, it will flip to a variable rate, and that rate hasn't been established yet, but it'll probably be somewhere in that 5.5 to 5.95%. Likewise, you can do something a little bit longer term, so it's 4.75%. 
uh, for a five-year term. And again, at the end of the five-year term, that's going to flip to that variable rate again. So they're looking at 25-year amortizations, which is nice. They're also looking for a down payment of about 35%. The bank itself, Scotiabank, is actually looking for 30% down payment. We say 35% because Castellinda needs to have 35% down to start construction. And I actually go a step further and, and say to my clients, you should really try to come to the table with 40% down. And the reason I say that is because you need 35% to start construction. And then you're going to want some liquid cash to be able to pay a few things during the process. So you're going to need 1% uh, legal fees. Um, and that's usually paid around the first construction payment you're gonna need approximately 3% for land transfer taxes. And again, that depends on different circumstances, but, but be aware that you, you should have it just in case it, it's needed. And then at the very end, when you've received your villa, you're gonna to wanna to furnish it. And even if you're buying a resale villa, there's gonna be updates you might wanna make or things you wanna change. So, so I say, you know, keep in mind 40% cash when looking to purchase. So just, um, just jump in for one sec. Sorry, Vicki. Um, just talking about residency, uh, we can send you some detailed information on residency, but if you do the investor program, which is partly if you buy a house and spend 200,000, they're waiving a lot of some of the fees, including that transfer tax. And depending on where you buy also, uh, you know, uh, that can also be waived. Also, and to know it's 3% of the government assessed value, which is not market value. So it's quite a bit less. So you know, Vicky's right. Certainly, her forty percent is a good number, but just wanted to clarify some of those numbers because they're it's a little bit different. The government assesses a lot lower right now. Now that may change over time, but right now the assessment will be a lot lower than the market value. The other thing too is it, anyone who owns any North American property can always consider refinancing or a home equity line instead. So I've had clients say, well, I went into my bank though and I told them I wanted a mortgage on a property in the DR. And I said, no, 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 you, you don't wanna say that because they will say no because it is difficult as Colleen said to obtain the property. But if you go into your financial institution and you ask them to leverage your assets to see what you might have available to you, to purchase um, a vacation home in the DR, that's different because they're leveraging your own assets to do so. So that, that's a possibility for many people. I, I would take a look at all those options and see what works best for you. Right. So let's say you do, um, you do that and you decide that you want to rent your property. By the way, if you do, a, I, I'm not sure about the US, but I know in Canada, if you do a, a home equity line or a refinance for buying investment property, your mortgage is now a tax deduction as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about rental management. If you wanted to rent your property, can you? And of course the answer is yes. Um, Casa Linda has gone uh, this year to a different type of rental program. We use super hosts. And the reason we've done that, if anyone's booked on Airbnb, you've seen these super hosts. It's the same idea. Many of our super hosts are Airbnb super hosts. What that is, is basically they're, rent, they're renting in pods. So you've got one super host uh, managing 10 to 20 villas. So it's really personalized guest services and just offering just, you know, great for repeat renters, things like that. People are very, very happy with the service that they receive because someone's really dedicated to you during your stay. Um, these, uh, these guys market on all the major booking sites. So you'll find them on Airbnb, booking.com, TripAdvisor, Expedia, VRBO. That's how they market the properties extensively. Many of them have their own websites as well, but that's primarily the way that they're obtaining uh, rent clients. But the big thing is having someone watch your property carefully for you. Your management and your rental management company are your eyes and ears, as are the house housekeepers that they put in there. So they're going to do things like manage your inventory, make sure there's nothing broken, you know, keep track of you know, what's the condition of the linens, you know, do we need new forks, things like that. You know, they're also going to do maintenance on the villa. So if there's something that goes wrong with your pool pump or the, you know, an electrician's needed, they're going to manage all of that for you. Plus, they're going to do your check-ins and outs. So they'll also, you know, probably have had someone pick up a guest at the airport, bring them to our welcome center, get them checked in, see what they need, help them with excursions, you know, transfers back to the airport, all of that stuff. Now, we always say with these are not meant to be investment properties. We are vacation villas or we are retirement homes or second homes. If we're not here to provide a lot of rental investment income, we're here for people that want to own these properties for themselves and rental income is icing on the cake. So we say expect to cover your costs. Now, having said that, a lot of people do very, very well on the rental. 
but we would rather under promise over deliver and have everybody be really happy with us than have someone say, well, I thought I was going to get rich during this and, you know, and then not make as much as you might have expected. So you're you can use your villa whenever you want, let it rent the rest of the time under our investment program that Vicky was, was mentioning or the, um, I don't know what we're calling that. We called it a unique opportunity. I guess we need to give it a name, but that one you are actually turning your house over to Casa Linda for three years and getting two weeks on your own. But for normal people just going into the super host program, we can, you can use it whenever you want. Keep in mind, of course, if you use it for all the best winter months, you know, you're going to uh, not make nearly as much money in the summertime, but it's certainly yours to use it. It's your house. So you can do whatever you like with it. And so we're saying this is where your journey begins. So we're here now to answer all your questions. Vicki, we'll start with you because you have some questions already, or did we answer some of them? Just from people that had emailed in. Um, I mean, there were a few of the people that asked questions when they submitted their, their registration for the webinars. So uh, just run through quickly residency, residency options. And actually, we won't get into the answers of those now because I know Colleen has done some uh, some more detailed information to send out with a copy of the webinar to, so that you can see those exactly. And it actually will contain a little bit of the COVID uh, numbers and what's happening here from a COVID perspective too because that a lot of people had that kind of an inquiry as well. Um, the amenities here, I think we've covered those quite well. Financing we've gone over and insurance costs. So people were wanting to know like property insurance, health insurance, how far from the hospital. So we kind of touched on that as well, but co costs are quite reasonable, uh, very, very reasonable actually. Yeah, so um, medical costs, especially for our American friends, because we have a lot of American clients and of course being Canadian, you know, we say it's free, but we're taxed to death for it. Don't kid yourself. <laughs> Nothing's free. But um, as an example, my husband and I have very good insurance, medical insurance down there. We pay $1,400 US a year for us both. So that's quite reasonable. So for Canadians that are like, I have to pay anything, and that's what you pay. But for Americans, they, they tend to tell me that it's quite reasonable. And he has spent a, a, quite a bit of time in hospital. He has chronic kidney stones. So he's had a number of procedures. So we've had first use of that and it's been great. Um, home insurance, I actually find to be a little bit high. Um, on my house, which is a big house, uh, we were paying about $1,800 US a year. So between, I'd say between 1100 to 2000 a year, depending on the size and, and uh, the value of your home, what your replacement and all your contents are. Okay. So can I start with my questions, Colleen? Sure, please. So thank you guys for those that uh, put the questions in the chat. I'm gonna go through them. Uh, just note that some of it, you know, you will get an email with the answers as well. So we'll just go over. Um, the first question was, how long does it take the residency process take and how long uh, can you stay in the country without it? Right. So um, it was two months that you can stay and they've extended it to three months. And I think they may extend it more. Um, how long residency takes? It depends on which program you go under and there's different ones. There's a fast track investor program. There's a pensioners retiree program. And then it's quite fast, like three months. Now, then there's just the regular apply for a visa uh, program, which takes um, you know, a few months to get your visa. And then you come down and do the rest of it down there uh, because they're looking for a medical test. They're looking for solvency, that kind of thing. Um, and then you get a provisional temporary residency for four years. And then in the fifth year, you apply for your permanent residency. And then you can apply to be a citizen if you want to as well. But um, there's some really good information online about that. Um, we, of course, don't do res residency. We always say, go see a lawyer. They do it and handle it and you know, hold your hand through the whole thing. Or you can, you can do it on your own. People have and are doing it. So up to you. But uh, if you want real details on that, we can send it to you. And just on top of that, is residency required to purchase a home? No, not at all. And if you're, they've been very lackadaisical, I have to be honest about people not even having a residency that have lived there <laughs> for a long time. They, they're really happy to have Canadians and Americans. They do want to know who's in the country though, you know. Right. But no, you don't. And you should know too, when you buy a property, you have the same legal rights as a Dominican citizen. So let's say there's some sort of legal dispute or something. There's no... Uh, discrimination against you for being a foreigner at all. That's good to know. Um, the second question we have here is, can Canadians start a small business um, or do you need a Dominican ownership? No, not at all. There's many Canadians that own businesses there. And That's would that mean that they would have to have residency before they could own a business? No, you can always own a business. 
course, if you want to live there, you should get your residency. But if you want to own a business and have higher staff or something, that's fine. The business would be kind of part of the investment, like you're investing in the country. Yeah, the investment residency is 200000 and it's uh, either in a home or a condo or whatever, or it's in, you can have a CD, like a, you know, an investment, um, you know, like an investment instrument at a bank, or you can invest in a business, you can do, it's all considered investment as the fast track residency. That's, that's just about residency though, but, or citizenship here. Yeah. We talked a little bit about the next question in terms of ownership. Do you find that there's um, mostly couples there? Somebody was asking, do, do single people buy there? And is there, a, is there a, a, I guess, a portion of the people in demographics yeah. being single? You know, lots, lots of single people buy. My next door neighbor, John, he's a, he's a single guy. You see that quite a bit, actually. And, and surprisingly, a lot of women. You yeah, know, I see quite a few single people here, yeah. Absolutely. And that's, again, that's where we come back to the importance of community. You know, so you have friends to be, to hang around with. You know, guys, they're all watching, playing cool, playing golf, watching football, you know. <laughs> Not as you stereotypical at all, but maybe yeah. that's just my husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, somebody asked, are there a no-go areas in Sasua and Cabarete, especially at night? Would there be certain areas? Well, I will say not so much Cabrete. Uh, Pedro Clasante in Sosua is the main street and one end has, um, you'll find it's the party end of the street, right? So it's, you know, it's not a no-go area. It's just the loud area. There's a, a number of ladies of the night walking around there. That's sort of that part of town, you know? I, I, I wouldn't say don't go there. It's just not, you know, not a place I would want to hang out, but it's not because it's dangerous. Always it's, be cautious. It doesn't bother you in real life at all. What's that, Vicky? I said, just always be cautious and aware of your surroundings. But I, 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 to be honest, I'd feel the same way in the Byward Market in Ottawa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's places in Edmonton I don't go at night. You know, lots right. of places I wouldn't go at night. I think it's far safer than Edmonton at night, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's really nowhere I would say are not no-go areas. Rough roads, maybe, yeah. like back smaller roads that are rougher and maybe those at night. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, somebody asked a really interesting question uh, for new construction uh, for the homeowners. How long would it be that they would be living in a construction zone while other lots are being developed? And I know we've got the two sections. Right. I can probably answer that for you. Um, there, there's currently 25 remaining lots in phases seven to nine. So ideally to, to purchase one of those lots and build on there first, you're going to limit your chances of uh, construction over a number of years. It, it's limited to the, those remaining lots. Across the road will be all brand new. So your your area of construction is going to be much longer. Right. Well, except they're building in sections and they did make a mistake I believe, right. in seven to nine where they decided to build it all at once. And I, I said, no, let's do it in you know pods so that people are out of construction. So in the new phases, the new hundred lots, they're doing it in sections. So they are, all, yeah. you know, all these lots get purchased. Everybody's out of construction. They move to the next phase. Okay. Um, in terms of personalization options, um, somebody was asking, oh, I think we already addressed this for pricing on upgrades. Is there a credit um, that would, if they didn't want a standard that was already part of our package, would they be able to apply that to an upgrade that they were wanting to get? Absolutely. We, we've had some homeowners who, I mean, um, in, the, in the process of selecting some of your interior selections, there are like ceiling fans and there are some that say, you know, I'd like to bring ones myself because they, they have a palm leaf look instead of the normal blade. So any of those things that you want to bring and contribute yourself, they'll credit you um, for, for the product that would have been installed. You bring your own and you just have to have it there by a certain point in the construction so it doesn't slow down the construction process. Um, and yes, that credit would be there and you could certainly use that credit towards upgrades if you'd like. But what about if there was a standard quartz counter and they didn't want that, let's say, and they wanted something that was in an optional upgrade, would that be a credit, the quartz counter? Yeah, if you wanted to downgrade to granite as an example or something, yeah, then you would. Or, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Okay, um, just well, a couple price. more. There's prices for all of it. It's all individually priced. So. Right. Just a couple more. Um, somebody wanted the estimated monthly expenses, so we can send them that of just basic expenses that are part of like housekeeping and pool and just the HOA. Yeah, yeah I'll add that to my list of what to send because we have a whole sheet on all costs. Perfect. Uh, question here, what are the cannabis laws in the DR? Illegal. <laughs> 
Legal or illegal? Illegal. Illegal. So what you do in the ravine is your business. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody would notice a new set of greenery down there, but <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, it's not, don't fly with it from Canada where it's legal to the DR. They won't like that. Okay. I have a question here that says, what is the high, the low and the median finished purchase price? Okay, Vicki, you want to? Oh, well, high right now would be, well, high could be as high as you want it. I mean, we've, we've had people there, there's a villa here um, that was built on a double lot that, that I think, you know, you were looking uh, close to about 650,000 before some of your upgrades. Um, but from our buyer's guide, I mean, it's about 468,000 uh, for our Villas Atlanta. Atlanta, sorry. Um, on our buyer's guide, we're looking at a Sunbreeze, a two bedroom home. That's a brand new model. They're just building two of them now, and I'm excited to see them. It starts at $199.9. Uh, we have our Villa Sunset, which is again a, a small two bedroom one, $179.6. And we're still able to do a Capri Villa, which isn't in our buyer's guide, but again, it's in that same ballpark. You're looking, you know, uh, 175 to 185, depending on tiled roof or, or, or flat roof. So a medium would be somewhere in between, to, uh, generally maybe about 250. Yeah, I think Eric told me, oh, Eric's one of the owners, uh, our medium price is 250. Like yeah. Sale price, yeah. Okay, and that's US dollars. Let's just note that for our Canadian. Well, that's including your lot, your pool, your landscaping and your villa. Right. Yep. Um, one question, uh, is it hard to ship things from Canada to the DR, like your personal belongings and things like that? Well, okay, so with residency, when you get your residency, you can ship one CCAN tax free. So that's one benefit of getting your residency. If you're just gonna come down with stuff in a suitcase or ship boxes, it's not hard. It's just like, if you're talking about moving your whole life, that would be the way that I would do it. Uh, vehicles, as Vicky said yesterday, vehicles have to be five years old or newer. And, you know, um, they're, like, they're really nice with you on tax, but things like if you bring your JAG down, they're going to give you a luxury tax on that. But um, overall, it's not difficult to ship. No. And there's not, a, it's not a high tax anyway to bring your goods in. But yeah, I would say this, you know, I don't think in all the years I've been doing this, I had one couple that just shipped everything they owned down. I don't think any of my furniture in Canada is nice enough that I would, you know, have to have it. But some people have legacy pieces from family or something, or, you know, and if you want your photo albums and everything, yeah, you know, it's very easy to do. But I also I think with the wood furniture, furnishing exactly. and things, you gotta, right? Like you, I think, Vicki, you yeah. and I talked about it, about yeah. it being treated differently. Right, yeah, it's, just, it's like a whole different, different climate, for sure. Yeah. Whole different climate. Um, one question, um, would we work with the Casa Linda sales team or a real estate agent and the pros and cons of each? Okay. Um, one of the things I'm going to put in the email that I do a summation email is our buyer's guide. And there's a section on what to look for with real estate agents. It's your choice. Uh, we work with outside agents and we have an inside sales team as well. So it's really your choice. What are the pros and cons? Um, well, <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Well, outside agents, I guess the argument is they're going to give you much more, many more options. Uh, although what our inside sales agents do is they do show you all those options as well. But the difference is that they do work here and they're, you know, obviously wanting you to buy with Casa Linda. Um, but I think that's the same with outside agents too, because they, they, they want you to be happy. And most people, um, you know, I had an outside uh, agency company for many, many years, and most people ended up building new anyway just because it's not your primary residence. People don't care, it doesn't have to happen tomorrow. We don't have to be in September in a house for the kids to go to school, that kind of thing, right? So it's, people say it takes five months, that's okay. I want what I want, I can pick my finishes, I can tweak the floor plan. So that's been my experience. I don't think there's any real benefit one way or another pro and con to, to going with the outside agent. I think it's who you're comfortable with and that's really important. Yeah, and and also, you know, we don't have an MLS system in the Dominican. We don't have real estate licensing. So again, I, you got to really vet your realtor and it's easy to do online, you know. Right. Um, and that's it for the uh, chat questions. Unless somebody wants to, to come on and um, ask a question live, uh, you, you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. Um, but for now, that's all the questions I have. Well, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday. <laughs> I never know what's going on anymore. I think I'm getting old. excited to get down here Friday. You're, you're confused. 
Well, I, I just had double foot surgery. So oh, yeah. I do have a quite, oh, sorry, Colleen. One last question. Go ahead, go ahead. Surgery. Go ahead is there... <laughs> sorry about that. Um, if we're deciding between new and existing, would they, would we need two different agents? No, no. we can totally sell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And you should, you should get a really good look. Like one of the things I've always told clients is I never want to run into them in the grocery store and have them say to me, how come you didn't show me this? I, w I used to make them look at stuff, you know, if they came down and said, I want to buy a villa, I made them look at condos just because I wanted them to really understand the marketplace, not 30, but just to really get a sense. Because one of the things that happens is clients become friends, you know, and you don't, you, we want to do a good job for everybody. That's really important. And oh, another question. Are the rental income opportunities that we spoke about uh, in the existing phase or in the, or in the new phase? Uh, it's on the remaining lots in phases seven to nine, and then it'll be, will there be some in the new, Vicki? I guess it depends if we well, sell. Well, it depends on how quickly they sell, because there's 10 opportunities. So right. uh, realistically, probably on on, the, on phases seven to, to nine, but it depends on how quickly those opportunities are used up. Right. And the reason that they need these houses is uh, for, we have a vacation club as part of Casa Linda, and it's to bring people down from interval, that we just don't have enough houses for interval which is like a vacation club membership program. So that's why it's, uh, you know, we're just running out of houses. So we need to add some to our little repertoire. Awesome. Um, question about the beachfront condos. What's happening with those? Um, somebody's asking. Yeah, so they're, well, they weren't beachfront condos. They were beach view from places. But what's happening is Casa Linda is starting a project called Connections and it is a LGBTQ community. And it's very close to the condo. So they've decided to take in Quintro condos and just make them part of that community. So whether we're going to do new condos somewhere else, we're not sure yet. So I've actually just removed them from the website today. So I apologize to anybody who was really excited about those, but they've gone into this other project. Um, yeah, so. Awesome. I see Lara's having a big discussion down there. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Um, is, is the rental furnishing level slash cost above normal furnishings? No, in fact, I'd say it's less than. So furnishings, like there's three different levels of furnishing in my opinion. Although what we generally do is say, here's three decorators, you know, work with one of them if you'd like to. Um, rental, most decorators know how to furnish to a rental standard. So it's, you know, you need a certain number of sheets and towels, certain number of, you know, silverware, all of that. Um, and they usually buy things that are a little hardier, a little sturdier, but not, you know, you're not going to put solid mahogany in a rental house, right? You're going to put something that stands up. Like maybe it's going to be a mixture. It's an Ikea uh, TV stand. No one's going to sit on that sturdier sofa. Things and materials that can be taken off and washed, that kind of stuff. It's a different field when you're furnishing for rental. And um, most decorators know how to do that because they, they do it all the time. Um, but it's not more expensive, no. Okay. Um, since uh, we were talking about the condos, uh, the same gentleman is asking if you'll be sharing that uh, information via email. Uh, about where they're going? About the LGBT condos yeah, or that particular. Yeah, I can. If he would just shoot, put his email address in, I'm, I don't think everyone's going to be interested, but I'm happy to send that to him. Uh, it's called, but their website is Connections and it's not quite finished yet, but you can go have a peek. Um, I'm moving everything over there later. Uh, connections-dr.com is the name of the project and um, I'm going to be adding all the condo stuff there but if we if he'd like to give his email we can certainly send him all the details on the condos prices all that our sales and manager just sent stuff out to the sales team this morning on it too right. sorry, so if someone, sorry if someone is interested yeah. <laughs> dogs are, the vicious dogs are barking for little, <laughs> tiny little things anyways um, if someone's interested in condos uh, still not the end of condo land for us where well, there's other land that we'll purchase and we might reproduce the same thing somewhere else. We just wanted to keep that um, LGD. They have made comment to us that people were working with from that community that they, they really wanted the condos as well. So it just made more sense to put everybody together. Perfect. Um, I do have another question. Will any existing super host villas be part of the vacation club inventory? Is that, or is it just for the new construction? Um, I don't, 
No, I think that would be between the owner and the super host if they wanted it to be that. I'm not, I can't answer that. I don't know enough about it. Actually, it would be between the owner of the villa and, and our developer, not really the super host. Right. I don't yeah. think there's plans for any of the super host ones, no, to, to be part of that. You're so busy and rented now. I don't know that they would want to. Exactly. They're doing quite well. But if, it's, if an owner wanted that, then that would be something that could be worked out with Kesselinda, yeah. Because it's two separate kind of programs, right? They don't, and they don't want to mix them up too much because it's too difficult with the booking calendars. Yep. Because they're separate. Yep. And that's, uh, looks like the final question there. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to just hit, you know, any of us or, you know, hit reply to the email. We are happy to have phone conversations and give you guys a call or anything you want. Everybody's situation is different. And that's why it's really important to work with someone that um, really wants to work with you, you know, and, and help you find your way and navigate down here. So um, I will send you a list of a bunch of stuff in an email, including our buyer's guide and a link to this recording. And um, yeah, we hope we talk to you guys all again. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. See you in March, Vicki. No, oh, you bet you. <laughs> Bye. See you soon, Vicki. <laughs> I can start to see a little bit again, just a little bit on the top of my screen. <laughs> Okay.